Salut! In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five missions that you have to accomplish once you've landed in France. So this video is for you if you are in the process of moving to France. Yeah! If you are currently applying for a long stay visa and you want to start visualizing what you will have to do once you are here, or if you have recently moved to France as an expat and you want to double check that you haven't missed anything important. Now, I have five missions that I want you to focus when you arrive in France, plus a bonus mission, which is more of a fun one, uh, which French people do naturally without even realizing. Obviously, this is my point of view as a business advisor for uh, English speakers moving to France, but this is also the advice that I would give to a friend who is moving to France. For those who don't know me, I'm Valerie Aston from Start Business in France and I help expatriates prepare, create and manage their freelancing activity so they can focus on developing their business and enjoying their new lifestyle. Your first mission is going to be looking for a long-term rental. You've probably rented an Airbnb or a gîte for your visa application. And now that you're in France, it is time to look for something more permanent. Uh, if you cannot stay where you are, and chances are that if you, are, if you have an Airbnb, then the owner probably wants to keep a short-term rental. Now, my advice is still, to go, is still to go for a furnished property as you will have just a one month's notice when you want to leave. And also, they should also ask just for one month guarantee. Now, my favorite apps uh, and website to use when you're looking for a house or a flat is Jinka. So Jinka is my absolute favorite as it scores through all the major websites and agencies in France. And you can also set alerts. And it's also warning you about potential scams. And that's really important because on some of the websites, like Le Bon Coin that I will mention in a moment, there's a lot of scams. So this one is really well done because it looks at the average prices for the rental and when it spots that is too good to be true it says be careful this could be a scam probably because the, the rent or the price is too low it looks more like a, an airbnb copied and pasted onto a website so uh, jinka to me is the best and also there's a whole section when you create your account with them where they teach you how to spot scams so that's really good now the next website i'm talking about is logo coin and you will see that this one is probably one of the most favorite website for French people because this is where you find anything. This is where you're going to be looking for uh, renting a flat or a house, where you want to buy or sell a property, buy or sell a car, buy or sell furniture, clothes, anything. So it's a bit like Gumtree in the US. That's the central hub for buying or sell selling anything either to individuals and there's also a few professionals on there. You can do your first research on there to get an idea of uh, what you would get. Either Same thing if you want to buy a house, great place to look to, to have an idea of what you get, the prices and so on. But definitely for house and flat rental, be very aware of scams in Le Bon Coin. I've stopped using it for rental because there's just too much scam. And really you have to do a bit of research before to have an idea. For instance, let's say you want to rent in Lille, look at, what would be the monthly rent for the size that you're looking for? If it's below or far below, if it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. That's the big lesson. Le Bon Coin, I'm not so keen now because the too many scams for me. It's okay to buy a house or to look for furniture because it's usually it's local people. But whenever it's rental, it's a bit more scary or you have to be very careful. The other website that I really like is Meilleur Agent, um, at the link below, Meilleur Agent and LogiqueImo.com. Because for those, they're scoring through the um, offers from estate agent, Agent Immobilier. So there you're more with reliable offers uh, and they're really good with up-to-date information. So that's the one I like whenever I look for a flat. I look for uh, Jinka, Meilleurs Agents and Logique Imo. And that's what I did over the last eight months. I've looked for two flats for my daughter in Bordeaux. So let I can tell you, I'm used to search for a flat. And whenever I need to go back, that's the one I look for, Jinka. What you can do as an expat is to um, really, if you don't feel comfortable with your French, uh, I would definitely start with an agency because it makes it much easier for you. You can avoid scams and they're going to do the work for you and they're going to help you with a guarantee. Now, in order to get ready to rent some, something, what you can do is prepare your file, le dossier. And basically, you want a proof of your, so your copy of your passport, a proof of income, a financial guarantee. If you own a home, it can also be useful uh, as a proof of having some sort of resources. So you can prepare this and prepare the file all compiled in one file so that it's light to sign. Now, what you have to do is be careful 
uh, you want to hide some information. If you send this file, because for instance, if you go on, on Jinka or Le Bon Coin, you can already prepare a file that you're going to send to the person you're going to be renting the place to. If you're sending it to an individual, to me, you want to hide your personal details. You don't leave your social security number, your tax number, uh, your date of birth. Or you, you just hide stuff because people just copy it. So you hide it and you don't hide it with a PDF because I can go and use a PDF and unhide information. So you want to make it with something secure. And a couple of websites that you can use for this as well. The government knows there's a lot of scams. So they've got two websites which are useful for renting. One is called Dossier Facile and it's dossierfacile.logement.gouv. And basically with this one is an online platform recognized by, oh, well, created by the government where you can uh, prepare your file and uh, hide information. And the other one is for file protection. Definitely don't go for PDF file because people can unhide stuff. So maybe you just print it, hide information, and then take a picture and we scan it. Or you can use something like filigran.beta.gov. And again, that's a, whatever it's gov, gov.fr is a French government funded website. And this one is when it actually writes information on it, where it's going to say, for instance, for rental purpose only. So that well, if somebody ends up with your file, we know the date and it was for rental purpose. It wasn't to uh, borrow some money from uh, somewhere. For students from my French business course with the one-to-one -one coaching, I have a video on this and they can also download my flat search sheet where they can actually track all this information to make it easier for them to look for a house or a flat. Mission number two, get a French utility bill. Well, that sounds a bit silly. Valerie, I just got a mobile phone. Job done. Boop. No, that's the wrong answer. First of all, uh, why do I recommend doing this? When you want to open a bank account, rent a place, set up a business, anything official, you will be asked again and again for a utility bill in order to prove your address. And believe me, this is when uh, you officially become someone in France. You do exist once you have an address with your name. So this utility bill will have to be with an officially recognized body. So we're talking about official utility bill, which is uh, electricity, gas, water, or landline. So for instance, EDF for electricity, Gaz de France, Orange for landline. This is not your insurance bill or your mobile phone bill. And whenever you do something official, like opening a bank account or creating a business, this utility bill has to be less than three months old. This is why I like the bill with EDF because the online site is very useful and you can do download an attestation de domicile or attestation titulaire de contrat and you can just download it whenever you need it. I can't tell you how often I go on that site to get that attestation when I want to prove something. My last advice is if you are a couple, you want to make sure that you add both your names on that utility bill Monsieur et Madame Anthony Dupont, so that whenever you need to prove your address, it, it works for both of us. This happened for my customers. Sometimes when we reg register businesses or two businesses, the bill is into Mr.'s name and not Mrs. Uh, and then we struggle to find an ad or a reliable document. Just know that for suppliers of landlines or internet, what we call the box, uh, Orange, Free, Bouig, Telecom, they also have cheaper versions like Search or Pretel. Uh, which also count as the uh, landline that can be used as utility bill. Believe me, you want to do this. This is boring, but this is the first time you will actually be looking forward to receive a bill in your postal mail. But at least this is this will be your first proof that you are into the French system and your first reward into the paperwork hassle. C'est très important. Now, mission number three is to validate your visa with the office. So office stands for Office Français de l'Immigration et de l'Intégration. So this may sound obvious again, but sometimes when you arrive in France, you're just so busy with your new life, going through the missions I've just mentioned, that you just forget that you have to uh, record or validate your visa or carte de séjour. So your visa will have been issued in your home country and added to your passport. You will need to validate it with the OFI, the Office Français de l'Immigration et de l'Intégration, within 90 days of your arrival in France. You can validate your visa by going online uh, with the OFI website, and then you will be invited for a visit. So just know that it can take quite a while before you get this appointment. Also know that this first appointment with the OFI is where you will have to go when you want to renew your visa or carte de séjour. You'll be going to that prefecture. So if you know that you just landed in one Airbnb for a couple of weeks and you're moving to different departments, maybe you move and then you do the OFI validation so that it's close to where you plan to live. Mission number four, open a French bank account. 
Okay, this one actually sounds easier than it is, and especially if you're coming from the US or the UK. Uh, and I'm going to be focusing here on opening a personal bank account. Uh, because this is the starting point, even if at some point you want to uh, create your business and have a business bank, okay, bank account, we are starting with your personal one. And we're going to be talking about opening a bank account with a brick and mortar bank, i.e. the one with a physical, physical bank. Uh, because if you're new to France, online banks won't want to hear from you until you actually have a basic personal bank account with a French brick and mortar bank because that's to them, that's a proof of you being stable. Before we go and look at this, don't imagine yourself going online and setting up an account in five minutes or even just walking in and walking out of the bank within an hour. Nope. Imagine yourself going back in, your, in the 80s when you had to book an appointment uh, with the bank in order to open a bank account. Yes, we... <laughs> Even if you don't plan to borrow some money and you want to put money in the bank, you have to see uh, an advisor and ask them if they're willing to open a bank account. I'm exaggerating a little bit here, uh, but just slightly. Uh, just let me know in the comments how that experience was for you. Uh, how did you open your first bank account, whether it was smooth or not? I'd be interested to hear from your feedback. Now back to our mission of opening a bank account. You want to check the banks that are nearby in your village. So the most common banks in France with lots of branches are Crédit Agricole, Crédit Mutuel, Caisse d'Epargne, CIC, BNP, Paribas. There's also La Banque Postale, but to me, it's not very flexible. Um, don't particularly recommend this one. Uh, you can have a look online to see what they offer and do a bit of research. And then you're going to be booking an appointment with the conseiller en charge des particuliers or conseiller particulier. And later on, when you will be at the business stage, you will want to book an appointment with the conseiller en charge des professionnels, conseiller professionnel. And if you book the appointment with the wrong person, they can't help you because they're either looking after individuals or they're either looking after businesses. Now, when you have this appointment, take your passport, your visa, your brand new utility bill, proofs of income, and you're going to have a chat about your plan. So at this stage, even if you talk to the uh, personal uh, advisor, conseiller particulier, mention both your personal and business plan. This is what I'm doing. We just landed. We're living here. We might be looking for, a, we might buy a house. Uh, I have planned to start a business because they might help you with the others. And if you like the bank and their services, then you open the bank account. Uh, you may have to uh, send more documents by emails, but at this point, because you've met the advisor, then you can just do this by email. Uh, same thing as for the utility bill, if you are married, make sure you add monsieur et madame so you have both your names on the bank account. My fifth mission for you is to open a PO box. For this one, it's for you if you are planning to move, and moving is the word really, if you think you're going to be moving in the next few months, I recommend, and that you plan to create a business uh, shortly, I recommend that you do set up a PO box. Basically, if you know that you're going to be moving houses, or more importantly, regions, in the next six months, then you want, and you want to start a business, then you want this. And the reason I'm saying region, in France, we have the big regions like Normandy, uh, Pays de la Loire, uh, Occitanie. And then within the regions, we have departments. And sometimes without realizing when you buy a house somewhere else or you move to a different flat, you may not realize that you are in a different department or a different region. And basically that can have an impact in terms of health cover and business as to the body you relate to because they have local offices and usually you tend to relate to one body. So if you're moving, trust me, set up a PO box so that basically all you have to do is inform the PO box company of your new location. The thing to remember here is that when you register a business, basically there's very important postal mail that will arrive in the first few, few months. And yes, I did mention postal mail. And you're going to have, you're going to receive some very important letters from URSA for your social charges, Trésor public for your business taxes, uh, CPM, La Sécu for your health cover. And you do not want to miss those because if you do, it's going to be a struggle to 
ask them to send them back again. Uh, and if you miss the letters from CPM for your health cover, that's when we have horror stories of people whose health cover is still not set up after one year. So if you plan to move within the next four months and you're very likely to miss those letters, then make sure you set up a PO box. And I recommend using ce domicilier. I'll add the details in the comment below because ce domicilier offer PO boxes, PO boxes all across France. The idea of the PO box is that this is your official commercial address, uh, the business address, and your personal address remains hidden. And all you have to do is inform the PO box company of your new address so that uh, it doesn't mess up the business. And just be aware that this has to be done before we register the business, because when we are at that stage of registering the business, we need to provide the reference of the PO box company. And we'll also need to give a copy of that rental contract to the tax office. And finally, we are moving to the sixth mission of the bonus one, the first one. And this one is to find the best baker, le boulanger, le pâtissier in your town. So this one is one that French people actually do naturally without even thinking about it. It's to find the best local baker. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding, you will see. Basically, you're going to go around the local bakeries in your village or in your town and you're going to be tasting the best bread and the best cake and you're going to find which one is the best bread maker, le boulanger, i.e. the baguette or the specialty bread. And then you're going to go and find the best cake maker, le pâtissier, which is more like for your Sunday cakes. And you might even go and look which one does the bake, makes the best croissant, which is the viennoiserie. In France, uh, a baker is actually a regulated trade. And most of the time, when the baker gets trained, they actually have a specialty, which is either baker, boulanger, or cake, pâtissier, which means that usually they have a specialty at which they're best at. And most French people, they would actually go to a different place whenever they want to buy something. For instance, in my village, we have four bakers for about 3,000 inhabitants. Yeah, we need that, four bakers. And we're going to go to a different baker based on what we want to buy. If we want to buy a croissant, we're going to go to the one by the church. If we want to buy bread, we're going to go to the one by the town hall. And if we want to buy Sunday cakes, we're going to go to the one by the pasto, post office. And no kidding, even my kids ask uh, where, where I got the croissant from before they even start biting into it. And even though when our French friends who are now living in New Zealand come over and visit, they ask, oh, remind me, where is the best uh, croissant in town? Before they go and buy them. So this is ingrained in us you have to look into this. So let me know whether you've had a go at this or whether you knew before that French people do pay attention to this kind of thing. That's it. We've gone through the five missions that you do recommend you do when you land in France. And it was basically to find a long-term rental, get a utility bill, uh, validate your visa or carte de séjour with OFI, open a personal bank account, set up a PO box and finally look for the best baker in town. So let me know in the comments how you got on with those missions and also share with me whether you would add a must-do mission to this list that would make your life in France easier. Voilà, c'est tout pour aujourd'hui. À bientôt. Salut.